Welcome to Partridge Lakes. Today, we've come to Covey One, which is one of the match lakes here at Partridge. I just want to run you through my approach of how I use Blake's baits on this venue in order to get the most out of your peg during the summertime. Catch a nice net of fish. Right, so the first approach, what I'm going to start the session on today, is fishing with soft pellets. I'm going to start in the margin. So I'm going to talk you through the bait, what I'll use for that and how I'll prepare it. So the feed bait is going to be the 2.3mm Blake's Carp pellets. They're just a nice pellet which soak up really well for when you're fishing in this little cad pot. And they soak up nice and big and fluffy and they just make the perfect feed when you're doing this style of fishing. So to prepare them, I'm just going to put a decent amount into a bait tub. What I'm thinking I'm going to need for a session, like the water's nice and warm now, the fish are on the feed, so a nice full bag of pellets is going to do me for the session. And then to prepare them is dead simple. I just cover them level with water and leave them to soak up the optimum amount of water, just so they're nice and big and fluffy, and I think that way you get more bites. So just get some water and just cover them so that they're just level or just below the water. And because these are quite good quality pellet and they can soak up plenty of water, I can just leave them and you won't have any issue. They'll just soak up nice and big and they'll be the absolute perfect micro pellet for feeding your little pot. On the hook when I'm fishing with soft pellets, I just use the 4mm expanders and I've prepared some the night before as that's what I normally do to make sure they're ready to go for the session. But I'm going to show you quickly how I prepare them as well. So. So prepare some of these, all you need is a little food bag like this. And you don't need many pellets to be fair, one bag tends to last you quite a while. So I just get sort of a hundred, maybe a couple of handfuls of pellets, 100, 150 pellets. And then just pour the water in, just so you've got again, just enough water to cover the pellets in your bag. And then just tie them down into the corner and screw them up like that and then just tie a knot in the bag. And then what I generally do is put these in the fridge overnight. And by the time I get to me peg in the morning, they'll be absolutely perfect. And then with the weight of the hook, they'll just sink and they'll be absolutely perfect. No need to pump and they'll be a nice tough pellet for on the hook. Right, so I'm just gonna explain my rig choice for today. It's dead simple today, I've only actually set up two rigs. Because it's nice and warm, we're going to be fishing the shallow water and that's where we're going to catch a decent stamp of fish and target a big weight of fish. So the first rig I'm going to talk about is the edge rig and that's just for fishing with pellets. And the elastic choice is a white hydro elastic. It's a perfect sort of choice when I'm fishing for F1s and carp on these sort of venues. Um, it's great elastic for that. Nice and soft but also can power up enough to land a carp. The main line's 017 main line. That's nice and strong and durable when I'm fishing again for like say F1s and carp on these sort of venues. I've got two number eight back shot. It's really important when you're fishing on a slope to have your back shot on your rig, just to sort of pin it on the slope so that when the fish are coming in and wafting your rig around, you can pin it in place. So your hook bait is that right body over depth and it's sat there and you're gonna get a nice clean bite. The float is a Richie Wilson muddy. 
I use them floats for all my shallow water fishing when I'm fishing in two foot or lesser water. They're just the perfect float for that. Nice thick tip so that they don't drag under when there's fish wafting your rig around. It just stops you from foul looking fish. Going down to the shotting pattern. Again, nice simple shotting pattern for fishing in the shallow water. I've just got a bulk of number eight stots, just above a short three inch hook length. That's 014 diver tournament line. That's just a nice sort of line. 013 to 014 is the perfect line for on here. And then I've just got a size 16 Guru Super LWG hook, which I'm going to be fishing a formal expander on. And that's just ideal for that. Right, so we're just going to start the session now. And I'm going to start by fishing in the edge with pellets. And normally you get quite a quick response on pellets. So I'm just going to start by putting formal expander on the hook. And I'm just going to feed just a little cut down medium Guru Cad Pot full of the two mil cart pellets. And I'm just going to press them into the pot lightly so that when I ship out and I want to feed me bait, I can just drop me pot low to the water and the pellet should just fall out the pot without making any unnecessary noise that might cause you to foul look a fish. So I'm just going to line it up with my marker, drop it down to the water, let the pellets fall out and then just draw me rig on top of the bait while I've fed. And now just sit there and be patient. Now straight away I've had a bit of a liner as the fish has come into the peg. Just be patient, lift your rig back up. And there was a fish on that then. Just ship it back. Feels like an F1. A little small F1. That's a nice start. Like I say, you normally get a nice quick response when you feed pellets. You can often catch a fish first chuck. Small little stocky F1. I'm just going to put another expander on the hook. Fill me pot up. And repeat that process of feeding and putting me rig in again. Now, as you can see that first chuck, I did have a few indications straight away and it was a bit of a weird bite and that is often something you get early on in the session before the fish have settled to the bait. They can often rush in the peg but then hopefully after I've fed a few times, the fish will calm down, start coming in the peg a bit slower and I'll get nice clean bites. Now that was much better. Had a nice bite. And it just went straight under and I've got a fish on. Just another small F1. These are the sort of fish you tend to catch on pellets. But it just gives you a nice good start to the match. And then hopefully later in the session, we can swap over to that ground bait line across, catch some of the bonus fish. So again, stick with feeding that small pot of micro pellets. Focus on when you're feeding your bait, making sure that it's dead in line with your marker and you make as little noise as possible to make sure pellets just force himself out the pot drop your rig right on the spot just sit there and wait for a bite now that's lovely again a couple of little liners and then a nice clean bite so it just tells me I'm feeding that right amount of bait and I've started on the right bait in fishing with pellets in this depth of water. Now it's around two foot down this edge so if I'd have gone straight in and fed ground bait there I think I could have had quite a few problems with foul looking fish. 
Now I am getting a few liners, but by feeding pellets, I have managed to go in and catch three fish and three puttings nicely in the mouth. So thinking very carefully about the bait that you choose to fish with, depending on how your peg plums up, very important in order to get the most out of your peg. gonna swing my rig into position, line my pot up with the marker, just lower the pot, like you see there I've just stuck the fish straight away. I'm gonna ship down to the edge. And the nice thing about starting on pellets is you normally get quite a quick response at the start of the session and you normally get a nice early run of fish before having to swap to feeding ground bait to keep attracting the fish into the pegs. So the second approach today is going to be fishing across towards the mud line and fishing with ground bait. So I'm just going to run you through how to prepare that now. The ground bait I use for fishing in the mud line is the commercial pole mix, which is in our commercial masters range. And it's just a nice mix for fishing in the summer for carp and F1s. It makes the perfect all round mix. So my personal way of preparing it is to add all the water at once so that you saturate the mix and then it makes it nice and heavy and damp and sinks to the bottom and sort of eradicates any liners and foul up fish. So I'll talk you through the ratios what I use now. So a, a kilo bag of pole mix is around three pints of ground bait. So like you see there, that's about three pints. So then I'm just gonna put that straight into the bucket and then water wise, I just tend to add about an inch less water than there is ground bait. So sort of an inch down from the bait, from the top of the bait tub. And that's about the perfect amount of water to add in. So I'm just gonna put it in all at once, straight in. And I'm gonna mix it up, make sure all the ground bait is mixed in and there's no dry spots. And what you'll see is I've got a really sloppy mix. But don't worry about that because all the particles, all the pellets in the mix, all the crushed expander will soak up all the water and when you come back to it in sort of half an hour's time it'll be absolutely perfect. All I'll need to do is push it through a riddle and it'll be ready to go and catch plenty of fish. So my only other rig I've set up is the rig for fishing in the mud line across. I'm gonna fish ground bait and maggot there. And there's only two real main differences. It's quite a similar rig this is. The main difference is I've got a 13 hollow elastic. I've found when you're fishing in the mud line, especially when it's nice and shallow, you're mainly targeting the carp. So by stepping up to a 13 hollow, just allows me to get them fish under control a bit faster. And then the only other key difference is I've got a much longer length of line between float and pole. And that's just because, like I say, it is only really shallow here today. It's around 14 inch deep. So by having a bit of a longer length of line, it just keeps the pole tip away from the fish and stops them spooking when they're coming in the peg. Other than that, it's dead similar. I've got two back shot, a muddy float, a little bulk of shot, 
and a short 3 inch hook length in a size 16 LWG. The only other thing I want to touch on quickly is if you do go to venues which are slightly deeper and you've got over two foot of water, you just want to look for using a bit of a longer float, like this is a Richie Wilson Dink float. So when I'm fishing over two foot of water and I'm fishing with pellets, these are the sort of rigs that I'm using. So some of the pegs on here as well, you might plumb up and you might find that it's over two foot deep. So this is the sort of rig you want to look for when you're fishing there. So I've had a nice little run down that left edge, fishing with pellets, catching a few F1s, and now it's time to have a go across to that mud line and try and catch a few of the better carp. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be fishing with maggots on the hook. And what I normally do is I start on three maggots, which I find a good bait for both carp and F1s. Two whites and a red maggot. And I'm just gonna feed a large guru pot full of the pole mix, which I showed you how to mix up earlier. So it's nice and wet and hopefully it's going to sink straight down and I'm going to be able to catch a decent fish and get a nice clean bite. So I'm going to ship over to the mud line and again what's really important is like I talked about with the pellets is to drop your rig, drop your bait sorry, from right up touching the water just so that it goes straight down in a column. You don't want to make any noise with your bait because all it'll do is spread the bait out and cause your problems with foul up fish and liners. So just sneaking that bait in, hopefully the first fish that comes into the peg, I should be able to catch. So hold your rig right over the top of that bait or you're fed and just sit there and be nice and patient. Now, chosen to fish ground bait in this mud line today because the depth's a lot shallower so down the edge to me left I've had sort of two foot today now that's perfect for fishing with pellets but when you've got quite a shallow mud line like this today it's around 14 inch deep feeding ground bait is by far the better option as it just helps to draw the fish into your peg later in the session if there's a lot of fish coming in I can swap to feed in micro pellets as well and that creating a bit of a 50 50 mix to try and slow the peg down a touch if there's a lot of fish coming in but to start with just starting on ground bait and micros sorry ground bait and maggots and just get the fish in my peg and i should be able to catch some so like, I've hooked that fish, it seems like a decent fish, it was a nice clean bite. I did have a couple of little liners at first, but just sat there, repositioned my rig, and I've managed to catch, I think, what looks like a decent carp. So that's, like I say, the nice thing about fishing this mud line, the re reduced sort of depth, with it only being 14 inch, you do tend to pick out the bigger carp, in that shallow water. See, that's a nice fish. That's probably common of around five or six pound. And now, in a match situation on these coveys, catch a few of them in the mud line, can really push you up to sort of winning your section and framing. And they're a real bonus. And sometimes, you know, later on in the session, when them carp want to feed, can really rock up in that mud line but what I'm gonna do I can actually see an odd fish still sat in my peg across to the mud line so instead of going in again feeding me large pot and I could create a bit of carnage I'm just gonna swap to feed in with a medium pot and like on days where the the lake fishes really well and there's a lot of fish feeding you can often end up feeding very little bait when the fish are wanting to come in your peg and feed and they're quite active you can get away with feeding a lot less bait than when it's harder often when it's harder it's the days when you need to feed a bit more bait to try and attract some fish into your peg so feed that medium pot of bait drop my rig on it
Now hopefully, first sign we get, proper bite. A little sign of a fish to the left of me float. And that was a nice bite that time. So just swapping down to that medium pot, you can see how that just got me a nice clean bite and a fish hooked in the mouth. Now, we're sat here on our own today, so we're gonna get more signs, but in a match situation, 99% of the time, feeding with that large pot is the main method, but just being aware, nice carp, just being aware that if a lot of fish are coming in your peg, stepping down the amount of bait you feed can help control it. But then also, hopefully now after a few chucks, there's still, like I say, a lot of fish coming in my peg. But hopefully after a few chucks now with this medium pot, should be able to calm my peg down to a point where every bite is a clean bite and a fish hooked in the top lip. And this is one of the most important things when you're mudline fishing and one of the biggest things to stress is like, it's great to see a lot of fish in your peg, but it's about being able to catch them. And often I think anglers can feed too much bait and draw too many fish in the peg. And sometimes it's a bit of an adverse effect feeding more bait to get more fish in your peg because they can become quite difficult to catch. But well, that's the problem we've had today with a lot of fish feeding. There's a lot of fish coming in your peg. But now just feeding that medium pot, we've been able to keep coming back with the fish. And it just shows how important it is to bring a bit of a range of pots with you and swap between them. It's another, de another decent stamp F1. Much better fish in this mud line. And that's normally the case when you're fishing in a reduced depth of water. You normally catch them bit bigger fish, like it's around 14 inch in this mud line today. Whereas in that edge, it was sort of two foot. And what you tend to find is when you have got shallower water, you often catch the better stamp fish. So. to me marker on my tape which plumbed up nice and tight to this bank so like I say the fish have been feeding quite active today so getting tight to the bank should help stop any fish getting behind me rig and causing me foul up fishing liners feed me bait drop it right on top of me bait what I've fed and just try and work on keeping your rig dead still over the spot Nice thing with this mud line is you generally catch the decent stamp fish.
couple of approaches of how I use the Blake's bait here on Kobe 1. All the Kobe's fish very similar to this lake. They've all got nice edges where you can get into less than two foot of water and good mud lines as well where again you can get into nice shallow water. So fishing with soft pellets and fishing with ground bait are the number one tactics and these are the general baits I bring on all the matches on these lakes. But also there's other lakes on this complex such as the back lakes like Spain Marsh, Ribbon, Willow and Piper and often you know people are coming on for day tickets and they're coming on to fish club matches on them lakes and want to know a bit about them lakes as well. So on them lakes they generally are a bit deeper across and you've got sort of grasses to fish up to so I'd stick to fishing pellets on most of them lakes unless you've got some nice edges where it's a bit shallower than two foot to put ground bait in but on all them lakes pellets are a really good bait to go to to be honest. All these baits, the ground bait and the micro pellets are available on the on-site tackle shop.